Hello again. Welcome to the NPTEL course Canning Technology and Value Addition of Seafoods. So in the last class we have discussed about the composition and nutritional quality of seafood. We discussed about uh, different macro and micro components and the role of these macro components in the food and why seafood is so important. Now in today's session we are going to discuss about muscle structure. Always there is a query, can fish be considered as a meat? And according to the Cambridge Dictionary, the definition for meat is a flesh of an animal when it is used as food. Fish does contribute to nourishment and it is also important for sustainability. And considering that fish is an animal, the fish meat can be or fish muscle can be considered as meat. And fish meat, it has different religious opinions. Uh, in case of Muslims, they have strict dietary rules such as halal when they consume meat. The rituals has to be followed and that strict dietary rules are followed in the case of meat when Muslims are consuming the meat. Similarly, in case of Jewish, they also have strict dietary rules and this is called kashrut. And in case of Muslims, the only the scale fish are considered as halal products and scaleless and shrimp products or octopus, they are not considered or they are forbidden from eating. And in case of Jews, they don't uh, consume uh, shellfish, whereas the other fishes can be consumed. The scales uh, or skin, uh, scaleless fins, uh, fish are equally important or it can be considered, considered as a meat. But in case of Hindus, they don't have any special preferences. Only uh, in case of lacto-vegetarians, they may avoid meat from uh, animal origin or poultry or fish origin. And Christians, as such, they don't have any specific regulations. To summarize, according to different religions, meat has been defined differently and even fish is also considered as meat. If you look at the figure here in this photograph, usually larger animals like uh, cow, pork, they are sold in market as different cuts and loins and fillets, they are the terms used for these higher animals. But nowadays, these are also used in the case of larger fish. So fish is definitely considered as a meat and these are rich in different uh, macro components and micro components. Now let's, uh, before we further go into the topic, let's understand uh, what is the food pyramid and how it evolved. According to the evolution in 1940 US, uh, they came up with the idea of food wheel. It was not the pyramid which was suggested earlier and all the protein sources, they were put together, listed together. And these included meat, poultry, fish, eggs, dried beans, peas, nuts and peanut butter. And later in 1974, Sweden, they came up with the idea of food pyramid. And uh, again, they listed the products uh, like meat, poultry, fish, beans and eggs as the sources of protein. This was again redefined in 1992 by US. And uh, they rearranged the sources of protein and uh, these included meat, poultry, fish, dried beans, eggs and nuts. Again in 2005, this model was, the food pyramid model was re-simplified and redefined and it was again updated in the pictograph model and with this category, the meat and beans were put as the choice of protein and they were put together. In 2011, the food pyramid model, it was replaced by my plate and my plate was recommended as the latest method of food distribution or the nutritional distribution. And in this model, the, the protein sources or the source of components or macro components or micro components, they are not defined. Only the it is said that the protein sources, so it can be anything, it need not be meat or bean or the earlier specified ones. It can be anything that provides protein that can be included in this category. Now fish, if you look at the nutritional profile, it, it clearly says that fish has, uh, whether it is salmon or trout or any other fish, they are rich in protein sources and hence fish can definitely be considered as a meat. So it is right to say that fish is a synonym for meat. Now coming to the fish, based on their distribution, they can be classified into freshwater fish, brackish water fish or marine water fish. It is based on the salinity of the water. Now, fish can also be classified into round fish and flat fish based on their shape. And based on the cooking conditions, they can be classified into 
lean fish and fatty fish this is again based on the distribution of the oil in the body so in lean fish again uh, it is the oil is distributed in the liver tissues whereas in fatty fish the oil is distributed throughout the muscle tissue again uh, the fish is protected on the outer side by the uh, skin which is again uh, protected by scales and you know, in the internal organs uh, are protected by the bone cage or the cartilaginous material so if you look at the figure here you can see that uh, there are fins and this is a round fish because it has eyes on the either side of the head and then the internal organs they are protected in the bony cage and this region it you will find all the uh, internal organs in the other part or the upper part you will find only the tissue muscular tissue which it, uh, no other organs are placed in this uh, upper tissue part so now let's see what is round fish and flat fish round fish uh, they swim vertically and they have eyes on the either side and they are basically round in shape whereas flat fish they are flat in nature they are bottom dwellers basically they survive on the organisms that live on the mud and they have eyes on the top since they are uh, bottom dwellers they have to see or uh, the eyes uh, are placed on the top because they have to see the upper part and uh, they have smaller scales and also the fins uh, the anal fin and the dorsal fin it runs along the length of the body whereas the same kind of features you will not observe in the uh, round fish now these are some of the examples of round fish uh, you can see sardine, mackerel, groupers and pollock. Uh, so you can see that eyes are distributed on the either side of the head. And again the fins are not continuous throughout the body. They have specific dorsal fin or ventral fin or the anal fin. And these are flat fishes. So again it's clear that the eyes are located on the top. So you can see here on the top the eyes are located. And these are also called sole fishes. Now there is another class called shellfish. Uh, so these includes mollusks and crustaceans. Mollusks they are soft, unsegmented, and they don't have any internal skeleton. So, uh, but they do have hard shells, and they are again classified into three types: that is univalve, bivalve, and cephalopods. So univalves they have only one shell. For example, the turbinaria or the shunk and uh, by walls they have two shells within this two shell the organism will be well protected in this category the cephalopods means they have the appendages attached to the head region so mainly this includes squid cuttlefish and octopus they have pens or the cuttle bone which is the hard part or the hard shell found in the mollusk and crustaceans they have outer skeleton exoskeleton which is hard in nature and jointed appendages. Uh, crustaceans, lobsters, crab and shrimp, they fetch a lot of economic value. So these are the major uh, animals or the higher animals which are sold or marketed for their meat. So from cattle we get beef, pigs they are known for the pork and sheep they provide lamb. So the cuts you can see here and some of the cuts like loin which you can see in the beef and in case of lamb or in case of pork and also the fillet they have been adopted in the case of fish also where the sizes can be of same nature again coming to the nutritional composition uh, we have seen this in the last class also uh, the fish muscles they contain water in huge amount and which is followed by protein lipids minerals and vitamins and sterols of course myoglobin is again an important uh, component of the meat and the muscle tissue of animals they are generally lean in nature because again the meat doesn't contain fat the fat is distributed in the liver tissue and uh, the muscle fibers in the animals they are made up of uh, many fibers together and they are held together by the connected tissue so there's a connected tissue surrounding each muscle bundle and in higher animals these muscles are joined together with a tendon and uh, ligaments and these connected tissues which envelops the muscle fiber they comprise of collagen and elastin however in case of fish you find collagen in proportionately in large number elastin is almost not available and this collagen on heating it is converted to gelatin which results in soft soluble protein uh, it's a broken down structure the secondary and tertiary structures are denatured and they are broken down to digestible form of gelatin 
Again, elastin, it is also, uh, it's elastic in nature, that's why it gets the name elastin and it is yellow in color and it becomes tough on co cooking and it, uh, elastin also helps in uh, connecting ligaments. Then muscle fibers, it comprises of actin and myosin and both uh, this actin and myosin filaments, they are important for the contraction and relaxation of the muscles. So if you look at the figure here, if you draw an axis along the length of the body, this is a longitudinal axis. So if you along the length of the body, if an axis is drawn through the middle, the upper half of the muscle can be called as apaxial musculature and the lower half can be called as hypaxial musculature. And each myotome or myomere, myomere it's a bundle of muscle. It is uh, separated from each other by a septa. So that septa will be myosepta and it is basically collagenous in nature or connective tissue proteins and myomeres are made up of myofibular proteins. So this is a cross-sectional of uh, fish. In cross-section again you can see the septa uh, and uh, the upper half is the apaxial region and the lower half is the hypaxial re region and here you can see on the either side the tissues are darker in color and this is because of the presence of myoglobin and they are called red muscles whereas in the upper region that is uh, white in color. The bottom figure is a cross section of salmon fish. Here you cannot see the dark meat and it's a mosaic nature. And if you look at the structure here, the muscles, they have a 3D structure, they are folded and the narrow ends, they face towards the front portion of the fish and whereas the outermost edge, it faces towards the tail. It has a shape of W. And many such W's they are placed or they are overlapping each other and this way the myomeres are developed. So longitudinally it is like several layers of myomeres are arranged from head to the caudal region. If you cut it uh, along the longitudinal axis you are cutting all the myomeres. So uh, if you look at the figure here uh, on the top the correct W's can be seen and it is like the number of W's are stacked one over another. So that this is how the muscles are arranged in the fish and this muscular arrangement it helps in the uh, movement of fish in the water. It is also responsible for the uh, contraction and relaxation and not only during the movement but also during the postmortal changes. So fish muscle it is classified into red, pink and white. Most of the fish you will find uh, red and white but in some fish you also find these three combinations. In salmon it is a mosaic type distribution. There is no clear cut discrimination. Red and white they are mixed together to form a mosaic type muscle. And the color difference is mainly because of the myoglobin. Red muscle they have high amount of myoglobin whereas white has very little amount of myoglobin. In some fish like crustaceans and salmonids they get their red color because of the feed they take which are rich in carotenoids. So it is the same in the case of flamingos where they also get the pink color because of the crustaceans they eat. Now what is myoglobin and hemoglobin? Both are proteins which help in uh, carrying oxygen. In myoglobin it is a single subunit of protein with heme, one unit of heme. Whereas in case of hemoglobin it is four units that is two alpha and two beta. So if you take the difference between hemoglobin and myoglobin, hemoglobin is found in blood whereas myoglobin is found in heat, hurt and skeletal muscles. So skeletal muscles are very important in fish because that is what we are going to consume and that is usually processed and consumed in different forms. So hemoglobin it consists of four heme and four globin chains whereas myoglobin contains one heme and one globin. Hemoglobin is the carries oxygen throughout the body but myoglobin it's a reservoir and carries only oxygen and hemoglobin has high affinity towards oxygen whereas myoglobin has low affinity towards oxygen. If you look at the musculature, red muscle it is also called uh, slow muscle or dark muscle. It is used particularly in regular swimming. For continuous movement the, the red muscle is used because it is rich in energy. And it also has high amount of vasculature that is blood circulation is high in red muscle which helps in continuous movement. So it is also called bloodline and 20% of the fish total muscle mass is made up of red muscle. White muscle it is thick fibers uh, but it has less vasculature that is reduced blood flow and because of that the oxygen availability is also less. 
and further it is used for uh, short periods of uh, action if there is like immediate response is required this white muscles they take part in that kind of activity again it is uh, the activity is anaerobic here you know, the glycogen is converted to lactate and it is usually the spontaneous release of energy where such kind of action is used the white muscles will be found abundantly pink muscle is a combination of both white and red and it is good uh, for continued swimming and where it lasts for 10 minutes to longer distances and also speed is involved now coming to the structure of fish muscle you can see here myotomes that is the muscle fibers it is otherwise called myomeres each myomere it is encapsulated uh, by myocomata or it is uh, collagenous tissue and each myomere or myotome it is a bundle of several muscle fibers several muscle fibers they come together to form myotome and if you take one muscle fiber it will comprise of several muscle myofibrils so several myofibrils together they form one muscle fiber and if you look at one myofibril it will be comprising of several myofilaments and these myofilaments they are basically actin myofilament so the myofilaments they are made up of units of sarcomere so if you take a myofilament you can find number of sarcomeres and each is differentiated with one sarcomere is differentiated from another by the z disc that is the lightened part so that lightened part it gives a striated appearance to the muscle so if you look at the sarcomere here the light part is z is called z line one sarcomere is one z line from here to the other end z line so this is called one sarcomere and the lighter band is called i band and the darker band is called a band and in this a band region we will find actin and myosin and when it contracts it forms actomyosin and they help it contraction and relaxation so all these parts of the sarcomere they participate equally in contraction and relaxation so this was the figure that is you have lot of uh, muscle fibers muscle is made up of muscle fibers and muscle fibers they are made up of myofibrils and then fibrils are made up of filaments so each filament they are protected by a uh, sheet that is called endomycium together the muscle fibers they are covered by perimycium and on outermost layer you will find epimycium so it's like bundles are protected each bundle is protected so innermost bundle it is protected by endomycium and number of muscle fibers they are protected by perimycium and for on the outermost it will be epimycium so these epimycium perimycium and endomycium these together they contribute to the collagenous part and in between the myofibrils you will find distribution of sarcoplasm so this is how the proteins are distributed in the fish so the conversion of muscle to meat means food the conversion of muscle to meat it includes a number of physical and chemical prop changes so when the animal is captured or killed uh, it is in the muscle form and from there to meat it undergoes number of changes it, it is because of the change in homeostasis because homeostasis is lost once the animal is killed and it happens because of change in temperature ph and oxygen and also because of the shift from aerobic to anaerobic respiration oxygen depletes glycogen is converted to lactic acid which again reduces the ph and ph comes down to 5.6 and creatine phosphate which supplements of which phosphorylates the adp molecules uh, the creatine phosphate is lost because of that and then atp molecules they also decline because of its utilization myosin heads they bind tightly to the actin forming actomyosin again all this induces rigor mortis that is stiffness of death we will observe proteolysis and muscle tenderization so these are the observations or changes observed when muscle is converted to meat so usually in case of higher animals the rigor onset it happens in 6 to 12 hours whereas in case of fish it takes only less than one hour for the rigor to uh, start and uh, once the rigor starts the muscles are very stiff or the extensibility is less but as rigor goes off it the muscle extensibility is reduced now you can see the changes that has been described earlier in this figure that everything has been compiled together as uh, the meat continues the microbial growth can also be observed in the postmortal muscle and uh, rigor mortis will also onset and accumulation of other metabolites happen
So if you plot the postmortem against time and tensions, the major postmortem changes rigor, the fish entering into the rigor state. So after death, the stiffness happens in the body and uh, this can be plotted as uh, against time. So in rigor, when the rigor starts, uh, there's only a lim limited amount of time. And once it starts, it uh, stays on for a longer period. Time of rigor, it will depend upon the size of the animal. And after some time, it gets resolved during which the extensibility increases. And uh, during this period, if you look uh, at the, uh, the muscle components or the other components, creatine phosphate, for example, it is utilized for the production of ATP molecules. So one phosphate will be contributed to ADP. And because of that, the level of creatine phosphate will come down uh, with the rigor or the time. Again, ATP molecules are utilized for anaerobic respiration. So again, the amount of ATP molecules is also coming down. Similarly, because anaerobic respiration happens and lactate is formed, the pH is reduced. So it becomes acidic in nature. 7, it becomes 5.6. At the same time, muscles get extended. So it is the extensibility of the muscle which increases. Now in this figure, I have put uh, this figure to show that in the last class I had told you that the water can be divided into free water, bound water and intermediate water and this bound water, they are bound to protein chains due to their hydrophilic charges. The charges are available on the functional groups of protein, they help in holding the water molecules. So once uh, these are tightly bound actually, but once the denaturation happens, and uh, physiological changes are observed, this water gets freed off and the water molecules are moving away from the protein chains. Complete denaturation releases the water molecules and these water molecules, they are free enough to be squeezed out or moved. So this shows that muscle is not able to hold the water intact with the increased period of storage or as uh, it enters into the rigor continues. So uh, with this, we'll stop for today's class and to conclude this session, Today we discussed about the muscle tissue of the fish and uh, each muscle tissue it has uh, myotomes or myomeres and these myomeres in turn are made up of several myofibers and myofibers they are made up of filaments. So at each level you will find collagen tissue which is enveloping or encasing the bundles so that it can be held together and when you cook the product these uh, tissues they get degenerated or they are converted to gelatin the soft tissue and because of which the muscle bundles they get, they are separated. So with this note, uh, let's wind up for today. Thank you.